This is a rich new uranium strike. It's owned by three men, three buddies. Just a few weeks ago, they heard a sound from this little gadget, the Geiger counter, that was sweeter to their ears than a chorus of angels' voices. They'd found the treasure at the end of the rainbow. At first, there was great joy, and then greed. Their friendship changed to frenzy, a greedy frenzy, which sometimes leads to murder. The Joseph Cotton Show, on trial. Presented by Campbell Soups. America's favorite soups. 21 kinds to choose from. Starring McDonald Carey. In Alibi for Murder. Based on actual court records. Narrated by your host, Joseph Cotton. A shot. What's going on? Pete. Pete. He's dead. I didn't do it, Mike. So help me. What happened, Harry? Well, well, I don't know. But I didn't do it, Mike. I swear it. You know the trouble is you said you were going to. But I didn't mean it. Then why'd you say it? I was sore at him. Sure I was. He accused me of dogging it. Me. He was ready to quit a month ago. I, I said, work the other side of the mountain. Who dug the hole? Who smashed up all those rocks? Me. And to have him... Only I didn't kill him. All right, Harry. Tell me what happened. Well, I already told tell you. Tell me exactly what happened. Well, I... I was outside and I, I heard a shot. It took me a minute to figure out where it came from. Then I came in and I saw him. And you picked up the gun? Yes. But I don't know why. Then I looked at him and he was dead. And then you got here. What were you doing outside in the middle of the night? I was listening to the counter. I don't buy that. We'd already tested that, or No reason to keep on testing it. I wasn't testing. I was just listening to it. For what? I like to listen to it. You what? Yes. Look, we worked hard. I put everything I had into this. And when that counter clicks, it's, it's saying that we brought it off. You made it, Harry. That's what it's saying. You're rich, Harry. You're rich. You're rich. Maybe I can't quite believe it. Maybe that's why I like to listen to it. It's crazy. No, I... Just crazy enough to be true. Mike. You couldn't have done it. Thanks. I know you, Harry. I've worked with you for six months. I know you like a brother. I know what you're capable of, and it doesn't include murder. That means a lot to me, Mike. Thanks. Forget it. It may mean a lot to you, but it won't mean a thing to a jury. What am I going to do? 
A jury doesn't know you like I do. All they'll know is here's a man who wants shares with another man on a mine. Figured to make a lot of money if anything happened to the other man. Now the other man's dead, and you wind up alone with him. The gun that did it in your hand, a crazy story, not one bit of evidence on your side. Well, what am I going to do? I didn't do it, and I can prove it. Sure. You weren't even here. You didn't get here until after... Don't you get it? I was with Mona. What do I care where you were? Suppose you were there with us. Only I wasn't. Do I have to spell it out for you? What if Mona and I were to say you were with us? The three of us spent the whole evening together over at her place. Then you and I came up here and found the body. Who'd say no? Will Mona do it? She will if I tell her. Now, where's that gun? Just forget you ever touched that. I'll go get the sheriff. I'll stop in on the way and fill Mona in. Mike! I... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, then. Everybody in town knows you hated him, so I guess these apple knockers will bring you to trial. Trial? Oh, don't worry about it. They'll have no case against you. Take it easy, Harry. You have about ten minutes before court convenes, Mr. Grayson. We'll be there. Oh, thank you, Sheriff. Okay. If you fellows have anything more to tell me, now's the time. Harry, I'm going to give you the best defense I can. People around here say that's pretty fair. But I've got to know where I stand. Well, we told you. I thought maybe you might want to change something. We don't. All right. I don't think they got much of a case. They got no case at all. Maybe not. But remember, Lou Benson's going to prosecute this case, and he's had shoes on before. You try and run a phony story by him, and he'll tear you apart. We're not trying anything phony. No, well, I'm not accusing you of anything. But remember, I'm going on the theory that everything you two have told me happened just the way you say it did. If not... Don't worry. I might have to sue your estate for my fee. Let's go. And so the trial of Harry Woods for the murder of Pete Harrison began. As the state's case ended, it was apparent that the verdict would turn on the question of opportunity. Was it physically possible for Harry Woods to have committed the crime? The evidence was sufficient to indicate that he had. Thank you. That's all. Your witness. No questions. Call Mona Hayes. Mona Hayes. Raise your right hand. You saw Miss Weather. The testimony you're to give in this court will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the two self you got. I do. Be seated. Miss Hayes, how far is your home from the cabin in which the crime occurred? About a half a mile. I see. Now, do you live alone? Uh, no. It's my father's house, but he's been away on a prospecting trip. He won't be back for a few weeks. But on the night of August 19th, the night we've heard so much about, you were living alone. That's right. Would you describe to us what occurred that night? Two men came over. We spent the evening playing cards and talking. Could you be a little bit more exact as to the time? When did they arrive? Well, it was still daylight when they got there, so it must have been around 8 o'clock. How long did they stay? Until 11.15. How did you know it was that time? Well, they left after the 11 o'clock news. Well, how did you know it was the 11 o'clock news? The announcer said 11 o'clock and time for the news. I assumed it was the 11 o'clock news. <laughs> now, who were these men? Mike Flynn and Harry Woods. Would you point them out to us, please? Yes. That's uh, Mike Flynn over there. And Harry Woods. Meaning, of course, the defendant. That's right. Now, these two men were with you on August 19th from before 8 o'clock until after 11. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's right. Thank you. 
You may examine. What card game was it? I beg your pardon? Well, you played cards for three hours, the three of you. What game did you play? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't quite understand. We played casino. Oh, yes. Yes, that's the game where the Ten of Hearts is called... It's just a... called the Ten of Hearts. The Ten of Diamonds is called Big Casino. Do you realize that while you were playing casino, Pete Harrison was being killed? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. It's completely irrelevant. Well, she was sitting here all the time. She knows that... Well, if she knows, what's the sense of asking her? Objection sustained. Now, Miss Hayes, uh, did you get them anything to eat that night? I served coffee and cake. At what time? I don't know, about 10.30, uh, I guess. And of course, you uh, went into the kitchen to make the coffee. And to cut the cake. <laughs> and to cut the cake. How long were you in the kitchen? Oh, about 20 minutes, I guess. Long enough for... They were with me. What? Well, you see, I'm not really a very good housekeeper. I hadn't done the breakfast dishes. Isn't that terrible? Miss Hayes. So Mike and Harry went into the kitchen to do the dishes while I made the coffee. Miss Hayes. Mike washed and Harry dried. Miss Hayes. Yes? How long have you known these men? About three months. And I believe that you know Mr. Flynn rather well, don't you? Yes. We're engaged. May I ask you a rather personal question? If you like. Are you in love with him? Yes, I am. And you know, of course, that he and the defendant are very good friends. Yes, sir, I know that. If the man you love asked you to lie to save the life of his friend, would you do it? Well, I don't quite know. He never asked me. Thank you. That's all. And then what happened? Well, uh, as soon as the news was over, I was feeling kind of tired, so I said, let's go. So we went, Harry and me. Where did you go? Back to the cabin. Both of you? That's right. Well, how did you go? Same way we came, in the Jeep. Was there only one Jeep? That's right. Well, what happened when you got back to the cabin? Well, we, we found Pete Harrison's body there. Which one of you found the body? We both did. Well, that is, uh, we both went into the cabin together. I opened the door, so uh, I guess I saw it first. So both of you were with Miss Hayes from early evening until after 11 o'clock. You were then together until the time you found the body. And at no time during this period were you out of each other's sight. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. You may examine. Uh, Miss Flynn, uh, you had been to see Miss Hayes uh, many times before, hadn't you? Yes, sir, many times. And she was your fiancé, isn't she? That's right, sir. Had you ever taken anyone with you before when you went to call on her? Uh, no. Uh, well, you know how it is. <laughs> yes, I know how it is, all right. I was young once myself. That's what's bothering me. Sir? When I was courting my wife, I never took anyone else along, not even my best friend. Oh. Why did you take Harry Woods with you this time? Well, I wasn't really crazy about the idea. He'd been getting kind of nervous and jumpy, you know. I didn't want to... Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't want to leave him and Pete Harrison alone. They'd had a big fight. In other words, you turned an evening with your fiancé into a threesome just to keep Harry Woods out of trouble. Harry's my friend. Would you lie to save his life? No. Your Honor, I move that that question and answer be stricken from the record. There's absolutely no foundation for a charge of that kind. The question and answer will go out. The jury's instructed to ignore them. Mr. Flynn, um, I will remind you that you are under oath. Please think this over very carefully. Is there any part of your testimony that you would like to change? No, sir. Is that all? For the present time. Your Honor, the state would like to call two rebuttal witnesses after which we would like to recall one of the defense witnesses. How long will this take? 
It's getting late. Maybe an overnight recess. No, just a few moments, that's all. Very well. Call Ah Singh. Mr. Ah Singh. Mr. Ah Singh, would you come out, please? Raise your right hand. Your right hand. Excuse me. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated. State your name and address. I sing, Perry Elmno. Sing, you um, operate a laundry, do you not? Hand laundry. Did uh, Mr. Flynn bring his shirts to you to be laundered? Only shirts. On August the 20th, did Mr. Flynn bring some shirts to you to be laundered? Hand laundry, correct. Did you find anything in one of the pockets of the shirts? I did. I always go through pocket. No telling. Is this what you found? Correct. Your Honor, may I have these tickets marked? Mark them. Yes. <clears throat> yes. These are the stubs from my theater, the Bijou. Now, uh, the control number at 8 o'clock, August 19th, was 60107. And these tickets are numbers 60128 and 60129. Meaning what? Which means that these tickets were sold by the cashier who went on duty at 8 o'clock that night. Thank you. Cross-examination? No questions. That's all. Step down. You're an usher in the Bijou Theater. That's right. Will you tell me what, if anything, happened in the Bijou Theater on the night of August the 19th at around 9 p.m.? Well, sir, there was a complaint about a fellow smoking in the orchestra. Well, that's not allowed, so I went there and told him so. And he stopped. Hmm. That was all. Was he alone? No, sir, there was a girl with him. They were sitting in the back row all by themselves. Would you recognize them if you saw them again? You bet. I turned my flashlight right on them. Do you see them now? Sure. And there they are there. Those two. Thank you. Make that. No questions. That's all. Stuff down. Recall my flesh. On trial will resume in a moment. Mr. Michael Flynn. You're still under oath, Mr. Flynn. I will ask you again. Where were you on the night of August the 19th between the hours of 8 and 11 p.m.? At the movies. Well, speak up. Speak up. They can't hear you. I was at the movies. I said I was at the movies. Who was with you? Mona Hayes. Anyone else? No. Now, just a moment, please. One more question. Why? Huh? Why? Why did you set up a phony alibi for your partner, Harry Woods? I told you he was more than just my partner. He was my friend. That's part of the reason. What's the rest of it? He was my friend. And he was guilty. You knew he was guilty. And you lied because that was the only way you could save him. Yeah, what would you have done? Now, you? don't mumble. Tell the truth. You lied to save a murderer. Your Honor. I asked that this man be placed under arrest for perjury. All right, he did it. He was my friend. He killed a man. I tried to save him. Objection. I tried to save his life. Objection, Your Honor. What difference does it make now? I tried, I failed. I'm sorry, Harry. You afraid me, you dirty double crosser. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Let me go. Let me go. I'll kill you. Let me go. Let me go. 
I'll kill him. I'll kill you when I get out. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Mr. Grayson, do you wish to cross-examine? No, Your Honor. But I most respectfully direct the court's attention to the fact that the testimony given by this witness is in direct contradiction to the evidence he already gave. Quite so. And I direct that he be held for trial on the charge of perjury and that his bail be set to the amount of $1,000. Take him away. All right, come on. Will you sum up for the state, Mr. Benson? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Grayson? Sheriff? Put on your jacket and get going. I'm free? For the time being. Your girlfriend made bail for you. But well, you'll be back. I figure you'll do six months for all the lying you did. Yeah. Look, I'm sorry for what I did. We should have listened to you. What are you doing? Looks like I'm running fresh out of prisoners. Juries are funny things, Mike. What are you talking about? Well, they really never had any case against Harry. It was that alibi falling apart that made it look bad? And I told the jury even without that alibi, the state hadn't proved anything. Oh, his friend tried to help him, told a lie. That didn't make him guilty. They freed him, Mike. You're both free. Sheriff? Look, Sheriff, I don't feel right about this. What do you mean? Well, it just doesn't seem right. Mona putting up the bail money, she'll have to pay the bondsman. There's no way to start an engagement. She's already put up the bail. Court's closed. No, it's not right. I can see how you feel, but you can't do anything till morning. In the morning? Court opens at 10. See the clerk. Tell him you don't want bail. He'll put you back in my hotel and refund the bond. Only cost your girlfriend a few dollars. I'll take care of it for you. But come on, get out of here. You can't stay here. Look, I can't go. He'll kill me. Who will? Harry, you saw what happened in the courtroom. He thinks I framed him. I thought you said he did it. Well, I thought he did. The gun was in his hand. Well, how can he think you framed him? Come on now, you two out of here. I have no right to have visitors this time of night. No, he'll kill me. I know he will. Well, why? You thought he killed Harrison? He tried to help you? No. Come on, out now. No. He knows I tried to frame him. How could he know that? He didn't kill Harrison. Well, the jury didn't think he did either. I know he didn't. How can you know that? I know that's all I know. How? Come on, out. He wasn't even there. Then what happened? It was him or me. Pete and I had an argument. He started for me. Harry's gun was on the table. I picked it up. I shot him. But I didn't mean to. It was him or me. There was nothing else I could do. All right, bring him in. All right, Harry. He's just confessed. Take the hardware off him, Joe. You lied. You said they let him go. Maybe I did lie. But don't you figure they will let him go? The charge of murder against Harry Woods was dismissed on the basis of an affidavit by his lawyer and the sheriff. Mike Flynn was tried for the crime. And his story of self-defense didn't impress the jury. They had the idea that he had killed one of his partners and tried to frame the other because the three buddies' claim was too rich to split. Mona Hayes was sentenced to one year on each of three counts of perjury. Strangely enough, in the end, the mine did become the property of one man. Next week, we'll show you how to declare a man legally dead and what can happen when a stranger suspects murder has been done but can't prove a thing. 
I am weirdly involved in this modern true ghost story, and you are warmly invited to suffer with me. In the case of the absent man, next week.